welcome to our first Silver Linings of 2021. Um, before, we, before I introduce our speaker today, um, I just want to let you all know that our next Silver Linings is going to take place on February 3rd at 2 p.m. We are going to have a representative from Compass come and talk to us because they're exploring high capacity transit to be part of our future transportation system. So they are, have a survey that they will open up on January 19th and they would like to have people who live in the Treasure Valley between um, Ada and Canyon counties fill out the survey and you can find it on their website um, which is compassidaho.org. So on the 19th, we will also send an email out to everybody uh, important to talk about, but Compass will be here to talk about that survey on February 3rd. So we hope you can all join us. And today we have uh, Lance Giles, who's our lobbyist to talk about this legislative session. A lot of, as you all know, there's a many unknowns for this session this year, but we are just gonna get started and do what work we can accomplish and hopefully we'll have some success. Um, so Lance has been our lobbyist. This will be our third session working with him. And um, he has um, broadened our stakeholder reach tremendously as he's been working with the Idaho Walk Bike Alliance. And um, he's also become a big walker, so that's good. Um, but he's really helped us reach out to legislators and transportation agencies. And so I'm gonna let Lance go ahead and talk about what we can expect and how um, you all can help us this session. So Lance, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Cynthia. Um, uh, as, as, as Cynthia said, I'm the uh, lobbyist for the Idaho Walk Bike Alliance. And um, I'm excited to be here today just to give you guys a brief um, preview of what to expect during the, this um, legislative session and what we're hoping um, to ask of you to help us um, um, during the session to help us advocate for, for different things. And so for this session, we have primarily two goals that we're trying to accomplish. One, which is kind of the eternal goal of the Idaho Walk Bike Alliance is to get funding for, for walking and biking infrastructure. Um, and, and, then, and then two, we're, we're exploring the idea of, of looking at changing the penalties um, for vehicular manslaughter. We don't expect to have a bill um, this session, but we're hoping to get some good feedback from legislators and other policymakers on how to make it um, have a little more teeth to it. Because as many of you know, it seems, and, and, and we're trying to collect the data, but it just seems that when a driver strikes and kills a pedestrian that they're not receiving um, much, you know, much of a punishment. Um, and the current standard for a felony of that is gross negligence, which is really quite vague. And so we're looking for a new standard um, to address that. So right now Idaho has, um, there's, there's a misdemeanor for vehicular manslaughter, there's a felony gross negligence. And then if you're under the influence of alcohol or, or drugs, then that, that's also a felony. So we're exploring that and if, if any of you have any thoughts on how to put a little more teeth into the, the, the uh, felony portion of it, we'd really appreciate um, that feedback. Um, and then, so two, the, the, the big issue that we're working on this year is funding. And we were extremely excited to hear in the, in the governor's state of the state address that he was gonna include funding in his transportation package uh, for safe routes to school. And this was unprecedented. I don't think, as far as I, I know, no governor has ever said safe routes to school in his state of the state address. So that's a big deal. And, and, and that's really because of you. You know, over the last few sessions, you know, when we've, we've called for action alerts, you've responded, you've reached out to your legislators, you've reached out to the governor. And so that there's a momentum and it takes time to, to get, you know, these ideas out there. So we're, you know, again, we're going to call on you this session to defend, you know, that money. And we don't know the exact amount that's going to be in there, but we're going to, you know, call on you to write your legislators and write the governor to defend that money. Because there is going to be people that are just going to say, 
you know what, we don't need anything for, for, for walking and biking for pedestrians or cyclists. So that is going to be our, our major effort. And I think if you remember last year, and this is something Cynthia and the Idaho Walk Bike Alliance had been working on way before I got here was just the hands-free uh, legislation that became law. That's something that you guys have been working on for years. And, you know, all of a sudden the stars aligned and, you know, we, we reached out to you for action alerts and you called your, your, your members of the legislature and it got done. So, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these legislative efforts, you know, we're working on them, but occasionally the stars align. And uh, when they do, we reach out to you to, to, to nudge those legislators in the right direction. So that's, those are our two, two priorities this session are uh, funding for, for walking and biking infrastructure, which is which the governor's calling safe routes to school. And then also to just kind of uh, hopefully at the end of the session, we'll have a, an idea of, a, of, of some legislation to bring next year um, to improve, put some teeth into vehicular homicide. Um, with that, um, now that we have kind of, a, I've outlined our, our, our two priorities, wanted to talk about, you know, just in general, some of the changes that are going on. Um, there's been some big changes in leadership, both on the, on the uh, uh, House side and the Senate side, um, in the Republican and in the Democratic leadership. We're going to work and, and meet with those folks during the session. A lot of them we know, but some of them we don't know so well. So part of the, the goal of this session is to build and strengthen the relationships we have with, with the Democratic and Republican leadership. Um, we're also going to be working to build and strengthen our relationships with the transportation committees on both, in, in both chambers. We've got a new chairman on the Senate side, uh, Senator Lori Den Hartog from Meridian. Um, so that's going to be, she's going to be, she's going to need to be educated on who we are and why it's important to, to fund and, and strengthen walking and, and biking safety and infrastructure legislation. So that's going to be a, a challenge of the session. Um, the other thing that's going to be, um, probably a big challenge for me, um, and, and Cynthia and, and probably the members of the Alliance is just the whole, um, you know, navigating COVID, you know, I'm, we're not going to just, you know, normally Cynthia and I, we're, we're kind of camped out in the legislature every day for hours. And that's not going to be the case this time around. Um, we'll be, we'll be there, but it'll be sort of, you know, rifle shot approach. We'll get appointments and we'll meet with people from time to time that way. But for the most part, we'll, we'll try to reach, you know, reach our legislators through Zoom or phone calls and that kind of thing. So it's going to be a difficult um, session and that kind of thing. I'm not sure if we're going to have, you know, if, if, if members are going to introduce as many bills um, that they normally introduce. Usually you get a whole bunch of bills and I'm just not quite sure, you know, what's going to happen if, if the legislature is just going to be, hey, we're just going to cover some of the important things and try to get out of here as fast as we can. I, at this point, I don't know, but I kind of have a feeling they're just going to maybe just kind of say, hey, let's just treat it like it's a normal session. So I don't know. Um, we'll keep you posted on, on how that goes. Um, and then probably just some of the big picture things that we're, we're seeing out there is of, of just non walk bike alliance thing of the preview of the session. There's kind of two things that I think are um, out there. One is that the state is in, in amazing financial shape. There's a huge surplus that they have. Um, they're going to try and give some away and some of that money back to the taxpayers with, with tax relief bills. They're going to put some into, as, as, as we're excited about, into transportation and safe routes to school. Um, and then they're going to have some other targeted investments out there. So that's you know, that's kind of a good news, surprisingly, in the, you know, with COVID that, you know, our, our state government is on good financial footing. Um, but the other thing is kind of the, the other big picture item is the balance of power. Um, I don't know, most of you probably seen that the legislature, um, especially on the, on the far right of things, is really angry about the governor 
you know, imposing, you know, lockdowns or restrictions on businesses or just any kind of restriction at all. And so they're going to, they've already introduced legislation to take that power away from the governor. Um, and they've also, uh, another piece, you know, balance of power piece that they're going to take away is they want to, the legislature wants to have the ability to call itself into session. And currently under the constitution, only the governor can call the legislature back into session. So they'll, they'll pass a resolution and that'll come before the, you know, the, uh, the voters and the voters are going to have to vote on it, whether they want the legislature to have that power. That's a big power and it's a big power shift if the governor, uh, if they take that away from the governor. So, um, so those are kind of the big picture issues that are out there. Um, and then with that, I just kind of like to open it up for folks who might have some questions and or thoughts or ideas on on the session. So uh, with that, I'll just kind of kick it to Cynthia and um, folks just jump in and, and ask some questions and we can go from there. Yeah, so thanks Lance. Um, I would like to say there's a lot going on um, this legislative session. There's so many unknowns. We just really don't know. Lance and I are not, we haven't even gone up there yet. And we're not encouraging each other to go up there yet. At some point, we'll probably have to. But um, I, you know, does anybody have any questions or comments um, for Lance on any any of this? Uh, I have a question. <laughs> Is it okay? Hi, Deborah. Uh, hi, I'm Deborah from Boise. Um, I am. You said there are many new officials, and for somebody who really doesn't know a lot about these new changes, can you give us some names of people that might be important for us to know the name at least about who are the ones who are involved with transportation and and just just uh, to introduce perhaps somebody who knows nothing uh, a little bit, yeah, who are our representatives that are important for us to know. Well, the probably um, on the transportation side, you're going to have um, on the on the house side, uh, the chairman is 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 Joe Palmer, and he is he is he is from Meridian. Uh, the vice chair is Gayanne de Mordaunt, and she is from Eagle. So those are probably your key uh, Republican members to know on that committee. Um, on the Democratic side, you. you you only because the Republicans have such a dominant um, uh, majority. There's only there's only three Democrats on the committee, and those are uh, John Gannon from Boise, Alana Rubel from Boise, and uh, John McCrosty um, uh, from Garden City. So those are those are some some folks to to get to know. Um, on the Senate side, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a new brand new chairman, Lori Den Hartog from Meridian. And then we have Jim Woodward from Sagal, which is, which is up north um, in, uh, up in Northern Idaho. Um, we do have Chuck Winder, who's been a longtime member on that committee and, and a friend of the Idaho Walk Bike Alliance. Uh, Patty Ann Lodge from Houston, which is kind of near Caldwell. Uh, Jim Rice from the Caldwell area. Uh, Steve Vick from uh, Dalton Gardens, which is up north. Um, Carl Crabtree from Grangeville, who's been a good friend of ours on the Walk Bike Alliance. Uh, David Nelson, Democrat from Moscow, again, um, good friend of ours. And then obviously right here in Boise in District 19 is, is represented our Senator, now Senator uh, Wintrow, and she's from Boise and she's extremely knowledgeable and been a great friend to the Idaho Walk Bike Alliance. So those are some of the, some of the folks to, to keep an eye on. Um, on the leadership side, you know, there's, we, we've, we've got a brand new um, pro tem um, on the Senate side, and that is, is Chuck Winder. And again, a uh, good friend of ours on, on, on the, on the wide Idaho Walk Bike Alliance. So that's, um, that, that's been important. So he's, he's a good one to know. Um, Representative Rubel, who's who's the uh, minority leader on the House side, is another good person for us to know 
and she's been a friend of ours as well. So those are some of the some of the folks out there. Um, hey, Sarah, can I have people are um, asking for a list of the legislators on those committees and their districts. Do we have everybody's email who is on this call because we could just easily email that out to all of you. Uh, we do, and I'm also working on finding the link to put in the chat here in just a second. Okay, thank you. And, and Cynthia, we could we could send my or you know organizational session summary and analysis. That's got all that information in there. If you wanna, if you can find that from okay. early December. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you. Yeah, I think if people are interested, we definitely want to get that out to all of you. And if any of your own legislators are members of either the House or Senate Transportation Committee, it's great to sit down with them and we could help you with talking points if you just want to sit and talk to them about what we're trying to accomplish. Any other good questions out there, thoughts? I know Jim Hansen had a question. Jim, do you wanna just go ahead and ask your question? Yeah, sorry for coming in late. I don't know if you mentioned okay. the amendment to the uh, impact fee statute. I did not. Maybe you could uh, jump in and just tell us, let everybody know kind of what it is and then we can talk about it from there. Yeah, I think this is really important. Um, and I know the impact fee makes people's eyes glaze over but for years, the definition of basically what's impact fee eligible has, for transportation has been limited to roads. And uh, ACHD is working on it. Uh, the commissioners asked this to be, come forward. So there's a bill, we talked about it very briefly in our uh, pre-session today, a bill that would amend two definition, well, amend the definition, um, add to uh, bicycle and pedestrian facilities to those facilities um, that are considered public facilities. So it's not just highways. It would also add public transportation. Um, so that's critical because then um, some of the fees that go for growth uh, that, that new developers pay could go for uh, bicycle and pedestrian facilities that aren't necessarily just added to a road that's widened because that's what it currently is. So that's, that's how, the only way um, AZC or any city can use money, impact fee money for bike and pet facilities is if it's on a road that's being widened, which kind of defeats the purpose often because those are not the safest. Um, so I think that's really, really critical. Uh, what, what has to happen obviously is that then it has to operationalize on the local level ACHD can put in the include, it'll change the way it does its capital improvements plan. Because the way the impact fee statute works is you can't just impose a fee and say, we're gonna collect this. You actually have to have a plan in advance to say, this is how we're gonna spend it. And so the plan, the capital improvements plan will have to change. And guess what? Bike and pet advocates get to participate in the whole capital improvements planning process, which is really important. Um, and that might, you know, include pathways, bikeways that have nothing to do with existing roads. They might be along uh, uh, areas that don't have a road, uh, but uh, it's part of, the, part of the connectivity and part of addressing the impacts of growth on biking and walking. So dive in. And, and so is, do we know who's going to be bringing that legislation at this point? At this point, ACHD is the main proponent. I don't know what legislators are involved or anything like that. You know, we're, we, we get about as much information as the main public, but we did ask that it be introduced. So this is really good. It's, uh, um, I don't know what, le what legislators are working on that. I hope we haven't gotten to that point where I've asked. Um, I'm looking at it and thinking, I, I have some additional words I want to add to it. And so other commissioners might have other words. The invitation today was, here's a copy, just a rough draft of the kind of amendments we'd like to see. It's very minimal. Um, what would you suggest? Okay, well, that sounds great. We'll, we'll be on the lookout for us and I hope you'll let us know when it uh, comes up so we can be supportive. 
there is another um, question that Jared has in the chat box. This is a little bit of uh, more Ada County focus, but since Jim Hansen is here and and as we know that typically things that happen down here in our valley eventually do get to other communities around the state. So Jared, do you want to talk about your question on multi-use pathways? Uh, yeah, I can. I think Jim knows more about this than I do, but. As I understand it right now, multi-use pathways in county only jurisdiction are limited to eight feet when best practices say that that should be probably 10 feet. So doing uh, effective multi-use pathways in county only jurisdiction is kind of impossible right now. Uh, Jim, is there anything else that I missed there? Yeah, that's a it's a stupid quirk in the law that basically says if you're within a city, you can have a multi-use pathway up to 10 feet, but if you're not within the city jurisdiction, that doesn't apply. So it's, it's like, um, let's either get rid of the cap or expand it from eight feet to 10 feet. So ACHD will be proposing legislation to do that. So clearly it's gonna affect any jurisdiction outside of city limits that wants to put in uh, multi-use paths. And that's often, you know, the kind of thing you might want between two communities and the only main route is a rural road. Um, and you don't want uh, people walking and biking right on the road or just add a, sh a wider shoulder. You actually want a separate facility. And so um, making it safe uh, so that walking and biking can occur at the same time. Um, So Jim, that's something we need to look for during this session. You the the bill has been drafted, so it could potentially be proposed. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure there's a draft out there. That's one of several that we talked about at a work session. So uh, it's worth it to just contact. Um, well, uh, I was going to say contact the pedestrian advisory committee chair, and <laughs> she'll provide it to you because you'll get it from the director. But I guess that's you. Perfect. <laughs> Who's who, Jim? Who is your lobbyist for this session? So the lobbyist's name is. Oh, you would ask me. It's, I'm having a. Um, I'm having a Jim moment. His senior moment is a, a pejorative term. Go to another question. I'll find it. <laughs> okay. Thanks. I ask a question, Cynthia and Lance. This is Mary yep. Beth. Um, and uh, Commissioner Hanson, I don't know if you'll you would know the answer to this, but when you say outside city limits, like like is that a, a certain amount of mileage outside of the center of the city, or exactly what does that mean? I mean, I think in, of CUNA off the top of my head, and I know this is statewide, but outside of CUNA, outside of Eagle. How far outside the city limits? Um, I, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's just as soon as the city loses jurisdiction over the management of that road, then boom, you're in the, in the county and the, the rule applies. So probably right at the city limit. I, I'm pretty sure that's the case, um, but we can double check. It's Carly Foster with Lobby Idaho. Do you know Carly? Okay. Yeah, I know Carly. Okay. Any uh, any other good questions out there? So, um, you know, what we'll anticipate doing is as we dig, we've been digging into the governor's Safe Routes to School statement, um, and we'll be tracking that, and we will be asking for your help potentially when, you know, if it gets into a transportation bill and where the bill begins and as it goes through the process. Um, and then uh, as far as the vehicle man vehicular manslaughter, that is more of a discussion and we would love to get um, ideas and inputs if people are interested in that. We need, the reason why we created a, a draft was to start the conversation and that's how we get people to provide input. And um, 
So that's in the very early stages. Um, so again, you know, we'll be looking for some assistance on that too. And then of course we do spend a fair amount of the time watching everything that goes on up at the legislature. Typically Lance is up there every day. And um, so he keeps an eye on things. Um, obviously it's gonna be different this year, but we will continue to watch, you know, what is introduced up there. And um, we'll be asking all of you to, um, you know, write to various people when it's timely. So Lance, anything else? I, th I think that's I think that's it. Just just a just a you know thank you to the all the members and you know we'll be uh, reaching out to you uh, via action alerts to 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 help us uh, defend the safe routes to school money and and uh, I while that seems easy I, I I what I found is with the legislature that nothing's ever easy so uh, let's just think it's really super hard and um, and, and then go from there. There is a final question in the chat that Carl put in there. He is asking about a statewide Vision Zero legislative action. I would love to say yes. Um, I don't think we're quite there yet, um, but I think we can we can uh, we can work on components of Vision Zero, and I think there's some movement at the local level at some cities, and my my guess with Vision Zero is we will have to start working on it in communities to, to build the momentum and so that people can see how it works in order to get it to the state level. I don't know if Lance has anything to add on that. No, I, I think you've I think you've covered it well. Um, I saw I saw a note there from from Deanna Smith um, in the chat. She was talking about uh, vehicular manslaughter. So um, yeah, so what she was saying is like it should be the same as for people walking or biking or, or um, um, as it is for people driving. So basically, if, if you're whether the victim is in a vehicle or, or walking or biking, the, right now the penalty is the same. Um, so if, if, if a vehicle uh, strikes and kills somebody, you're eligible for one of the three uh, charges for, uh, or one of the three different penalties for vehicular manslaughter. And again, it's, it's either a misdemeanor, um, a felony with a gross negligence standard, or a felony if you're under the influence um, of alcohol or drugs. So those are the three things. Um, if for just normal uh, manslaughter, um, you know, that's, there are no divisions of, you know, uh, misdemeanor or, you know, gross negligence or under the influence. It's just, there's just one standard. So typically if somebody, you know, you kind of get in a, maybe you get in a fight with somebody and you kill them, you know, then that's kind of, Hey, that's manslaughter. And, you know, heat of passion is typically what the, the term is there. And um, there's just one standard and, and it's just um, up to, up to $10,000 fine or, or up to 10 years in prison. So we kind of feel like there really shouldn't be this divide of all these, uh, you know, penalties for ve vehicular. So we, so our initial draft is just to kick it with, with just the same penalty as it is for uh, manslaughter um, if you're not driving a car. So uh, that's our discussion uh, ground point, and then we're just kind of going from there. Good explanation, Lance, thanks. And I wanna thank everybody for attending today. Thanks for your input. Please, if you have any other questions, follow up with us um, and hopefully be ready because we hope that we can see some action happen during the session and maybe we'll end up with some success, but we'll just have to see how it goes. If there are no other questions, oh, Pat, do you have a question? I do, Lance, are, are you far along, uh, far enough along yet to have had any discussions with any prosecutors? Um, we have not, but we're, um, but we, we are going to reach out to the Idaho Prosecutors Association. That's our, that's, we're, we're at that point where we're going to reach out to them and, um, you know, uh, so that, yes, that's our next, that's our next stop. Because they're really going to be the driver at the end of the day, if, if they don't want this change, 
then it's not going to happen. Um, but we have talked to a number of prosecutors um, individually, and they have said we need a change. So that's kind of why we are, we're exploring this. Good question. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. It was really nice to check in with all of you. Um, take care and be safe, and hopefully we'll see you February 3rd or sooner, and um, we'll all be in touch with you. So thanks, everybody.